Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I have an awesome tutorial for you guys. We're gonna be talking about how to take vertical pictures with your Mavic 2 Pro. Now, as you guys know, the Mavic Pro original version had a way of using a portrait mode or a landscape mode when taking photos and it would just rotate the gimbal and you were able to get your shots and have it ready for a four by five Instagram crop. With the new Hasselblad sensor, I believe it's just too big for them to be able to rotate it. So what I'm gonna teach you guys is how to take vertical pictures using the Mavic 2 Pro and you're gonna have some bangers with even higher megapixel counts. So there's a couple things you're gonna need. You're gonna need a drone. It could be any type of drone, but I am doing it with the Mavic 2 Pro for this example. I've done it with my Phantom 4 Pro and my Mavic in the past, and now I wanna show you guys how we're going to do this. We are going to manually take a vertical panorama shot, and the best thing is now, our gimbal can tilt up 30 degrees. So what we're going to do is take a series of photos, angle the gimbal up, line everything up and then take several pictures going down. I like to do anywhere from three to five and for you guys that know photography, you know when you merge photos for a panorama, your megapixel count is going up. So you're gonna have more detail, it's gonna look very sharp and it's gonna look overall awesome. Now there's two different programs that I like to use for this. There's Lightroom and Photoshop. I'm going to show you how to do it in both. And hopefully I can get this video done quickly because I know some of you guys didn't like the length of my last Mavic video, but we'll save that for another day. So let's waste no more time. I am going to show you on the screen what settings I am using with my Mavic 2 Pro. And then we're going to show you an example of how I set everything up, how I take the shot, and then we're gonna dive into our programs and I'll show you guys how to save these raw files. So let's go. All right, so for my settings, what we're going to do is make sure our photo mode is selected and not video. And then we're gonna click the button underneath the record button. Now I shoot all my pictures manual. I have the most control and everything varies. We're gonna go to the second tab and this is how I'm shooting my panorama shots for manual purposes. I always shoot on raw, this way I have the most dynamic range and flexibility in post editing. White balance, I always use, depending on if it's sunny or cloudy, those are the two that I toggle between. And then for my other settings in this section, I'm gonna keep them as is, that's for another video later with the creative style and the color and that type of stuff. Now we're gonna click on the gear and here's all my settings. I use my histogram so I could see my highlights and my shadows. Um, and then I have the lock gimbal when captured set so that the gimbal is locked, obviously, when taking a picture. I like having the zebras turned on, which is the overexposed option right there. So anything that I see zebras on, I know the highlights are clipping. And I've, ideally, I don't wanna see a lot of zebras all over my image. And then as far as the grid goes, I like to have the grid and diagonal so I could really get that symmetrical shot locked down. And then as another personal preference, I do use the center point um, at the bottom, but this is all your personal preference. Like I said, this just helps me get my composition easier. Besides that, everything is pretty much the same as the default, except for the peaking threshold, which allows the red to show up on your image when you hit the autofocus. I like the high because that's the most accurate one. If you do low or normal, you're just gonna have a ton of red all over your screen, and I don't like that, so that's how we're gonna have this set up. So right now, as I'm composing my shot, I'm gonna give you guys some information on why I'm doing certain things and how I'm getting it set up. So I like that cross pattern dead center. It helps me line up my shot like I mentioned earlier and just having it directly centered with the pier, it's going to make everything perfectly symmetrical. So I'm backing up right now. I have the Ruby's Diner on the bottom of my composition and then we're gonna have the leading line going straight into the landscape. So for the panorama shot, it's very easy. We have focus peaking on and all we're going to do is take a picture going down and then raising the gimbal up slowly, taking multiple shots. And the whole key to the panorama is in each shot, you want a little bit of the portion of the picture that you took right before it's still in frame so our editing software can line everything up and stitch it together. So right now I'm getting set up 
I'm gonna focus on the pier itself. We have focus peeking on, it's red. We see a little bit of zebras, but that's okay because it's not completely blown out. And now we're gonna start our shots. Now another pro tip that I've been told and reading in the forums that this camera is the sharpest between f4 and 5.6, so I do wanna keep that in mind. Now watching the video, I'm tapping to focus with each picture I take and then I'm still sliding up the gimbal a little bit and we're gonna do, I believe it was four shots for this one and the last one I'm raising it up higher to get the sky but I'm going to tap on the land to make sure that's in focus because obviously there's nothing to focus on on the sky and that's it, simple. All right, so we're up in Lightroom and this is gonna be very simple. We're gonna go on our first picture right here and click it. Then we're gonna to go to the last one, which is the sky, hold shift down and click it. So now we have all five images highlighted. Next, you're going to want to do is just right click and we're gonna to go to photo merge. We're gonna select panorama and let Lightroom do its thing. Now there's a couple things we can pick. There's perspective, spherical, cylindrical. There's a bunch of different ways we can do this and it's all personal preference there's some distortion you'll see and that could add some artsy type of style to it so the nice thing about lightroom or doing it the photoshop method is no matter which way it's up to you to create that image so i'm liking right now perspective seems a little bit too far away um and i would have to crop in a lot so i'm probably going to pick either spherical or cylindrical let's see how they look Okay, so I'm gonna pick spherical and we're gonna hit merge and now we're gonna wait a couple minutes while it does its thing. And you'll notice on the top left, it's just preparing everything for us. Okay, so our panorama is finished being put together and it's going to be right next to the last image we selected. And here it is, it looks great. Now all you have to do for Instagram is select the crop, go to four by five and now you can recompose it however you want. So now we have a perfectly four by five cropped image for Instagram. We'll leave it right like that. And now you can edit it. And the whole point of the panorama is because originally, if we would have done it this way, with just one single photo, that crop would have made the image so tight, you would have had the flown really far back or away. And I just like the way this comes out. I know I'm gonna have that perfect vertical shot for my feed and everything's gonna look great. Also, the detail, is just awesome on this like insane i could see people on the pier and it looks just awesome so now what we could do is edit it the way we would want all right guys so our image is done being put together by lightroom it's going to be right next to this the last image that we selected for the panorama stack and here it is so what we have to do now is just crop it for instagram and now this is an awesome raw photo so you're gonna click on the crop, go to four by five, if you don't know how to do this already, and then you could just recompose it as so. And select the horizon right there, you hit auto align, and that's our image right there. It's looking really sharp. You can see the people on the pier. This I love this camera on this thing, it's insane. So now what we'll do is we'll just, I'll show you what my end result is with my edit. And I won't show you guys how to do this in Photoshop for the sake of the time of this video, but popping up on the top of the screen right now, or in the description below, you guys could click those links and I'll show you how to do it with my original Mavic in Photoshop if you wanna do it in Photoshop. So that's wrapping up today's tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up. It really helps out this channel and lets others who don't know about me get to see my videos. If you guys are gonna try this out or have a different method, let me know in the comments below. And as always, I will link my Instagram handle also in the description. I like talking with you guys. I like shooting the shit. We have good conversations. So if you guys wanna give me a follow, I'll make sure to follow you back. And if you need any help in anything ever, DM me guys. I'm Jason Anthony signing out. Peace.